Well, the big heat dome that's been in the southwest moves east, creating hot conditions for the central U.S., but there will be clusters of thunderstorms riding around that ridge. We also take a look at the Atlantic, which remains pretty quiet. So these are high temperatures by Thursday. Wednesday, Thursday looks to be the peak for most of the central U.S. Triple digits for a huge part of the plains from Texas all the way up into South Dakota, even parts of southern Minnesota by Wednesday and Thursday could see 100 degree temperatures. Uh, but the feels like temperature or the uh, heat index will almost certainly be in the triple digits. Uh, the center of that heat dome is still in the southwest, but the ridge uh, is moving north and east here over the next coming uh, couple of days with that string of 90 degree temperatures starting for many spots already today uh, and then through the week. One thing that we're watching as far as thunderstorm development is where the cap goes. These are mid-level temperatures uh, going up about 10,000 feet or so and the edge of that cap is gonna be right in the Northern Plains, so through the Dakotas into Minnesota. So we're gonna be watching that area, the edge of where those temperatures are too warm for thunderstorms to develop because it is too stable. And also where we see low level jet streams, which fire up at night because uh, you go up a few thousand feet from the ground, the atmosphere becomes kind of what we call decoupled from the lower atmosphere as the lower atmosphere cools off during the nighttime hours. So there will be these occasional clusters of storms kind of riding along the edge of that heat dome. So the risk of severe weather today, marginal risk for part of the Twin Cities into Wisconsin, pretty low risk, level one out of five. And then uh, there was a slight risk for storms that continue to go here across Missouri, where we did have some severe wind gust reports, 60, 70 mile per hour winds around the Kansas City areas, and that cluster of storms still going at classic sort of MCS, a mesoscale convective system or complex. And we're gonna see clusters of those kinds of storms probably develop in the overnight hours each night somewhere in the uh, central US. Tomorrow, it looks like that's gonna be mainly uh, South Dakota, slight risk of severe weather. Whatever holds together, we'll try to track east. And then as we head into Wednesday, that area will be more into Illinois, Chicago affected, Milwaukee, and then into uh, Indiana and Ohio. So uh, that also could change some of the temperature forecast because if you get these clusters to develop and you get some of those debris clouds, it can lower the temperatures in some lucky spots. Main threats with all these are gonna be hail and wind today uh, and into tonight and then tomorrow that area that we're watching across South Dakota, mainly a hail and wind threat. We're talking less than 2% chance of tornado risk each of these days uh, because we're not gonna see quite the organization. It's these classic nighttime systems that really get going on those low level jet streams and they can produce straight line winds and produce some large hail and of course lots of rain where we get it. So again, the winds, leftover winds in Missouri today and then tomorrow we'll be watching across uh, Wyoming into South Dakota and Nebraska for potential high wind gusts. Uh, so those storms will be developing as we head into evening hours. Evening today, some isolated storms into the Twin Cities area as I mentioned and then here's those storms developing across South Dakota and then whatever holds together trying to track east. This is the NAM model, it's a little bit of aggressive uh, but Minnesota will take that rainfall gladly. Uh, if it does pan out and, and continue to hold together because, of course, many areas in drought across the whole central U.S. The Atlantic, pretty quiet, though we are watching a cluster of activity here uh, east of the Caribbean. We've got Don left over in the North Atlantic, but uh, National Hurricane Center only gives a 20% chance of cyclone formation for this cluster of storms, but still we are looking at some pretty uh, heavy rainfall as this slowly tracks west across the Caribbean. This is the European model showing that moisture, tracking pretty much straight west. And most of the models uh, that we use to track tropical systems agree on this all tracking pretty much straight west, though we do see some divergence as we head further out in time, which is what we would expect. Uh, but either way, this does not look to be something uh, that we need to worry about. But of course, we'll keep our eye on it because we're heading to that time of year August and September, the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season when activity could pick up, but maybe El Nino will keep things a little uh, less active than normal.